Hello everyone, Ron again, and this is going to be a short video, but the purpose of it is that I'm just going to explain three really useful features in FL Studio, so it should be quick. And if you like this type of video, then please leave a comment below and, you know, I'll make more of them because I think actually this is kind of a useful idea in and of itself. All right, so here we go. Let me look at this. I wrote them down because I'm getting old. The first one is the current mixer track. And this is a feature that, well, I don't know if people talk about it, honestly, but I feel like I've never heard them talk about it. So I'm gonna talk about it. So if we go all the way to the left, past the master bus, there's the current mixer track. And as you can see, I have Fruity Parametric EQ2 and a Wave Candy on it. Now, what is useful about the current track is something that you can see if I play a song and there's other sounds that are present. What it does is it monitors whatever is going on on the selected track. So let's say if you wanted to look at the frequency ranges of different tracks and you don't want to have to put an EQ on all of them, you put one EQ on the current track and select the track that you're trying to monitor. So even in this case, if we go to my voice, you can see that the wave candy is measuring the volume of it and the EQ is looking at the frequency. If I was to switch this to like oscilloscope, now it's showing my voice in the wave shape. The spectrum would basically be showing something similar to the EQ as like a heat map. And the vector scope shows that it's in mono. If I play the song and hover over the different tracks or select them rather, then you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll show what each track is doing and you can verify it by looking at the way the gain moves because it will be the same as this. So check this out. So there you go, pretty useful, right? As you can see, when I hover over any track and click on it, these will change and they'll update based upon what track is selected. So that's a pretty useful feature because you can look at what's going on on any given track by just putting something on the current track because there's other things that you can measure too. Like say, if I was to edit any of the frequency points, the bands, then I could see what every track sounds like with that particular change. So if you wanted to compress something and you wanted to see what different sounds would sound like with a certain compression setting, you could do that by using the current track and it doesn't make any actual change if you deselect it. So that's pretty cool. And the way that it defaults when you select the current track itself is it shows what's going on in the master bus. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like if you put stuff here, you don't want to actually affect it because then it's going to really make changes in the mix and you may forget that they are there. Next, we can look at the playlist. And something that's very useful, which also relates to the mix of tracks, is that you can right-click. And if you go down to track mode, you'll see that this track is, un is unassigned. So what that means is that this specific line is one track and it's just not assigned to anything that relates to the playlist. But if you go to track mode and you choose audio track, then let's say if you choose a free one, so I'll choose insert 25. Now it turns it into a track where you can record and the same change is reflected right here. So the reason why this is useful is also if you go to the channel rack or let's say even over here, you will notice that under track mode, there is also the option for an instrument track. So if you load something here using instrument track, it will assign it to the mixer automatically. So if I load a GMS, 
the GMS goes to the next available tract. And it shows you that it's track 22. So if I go to number 22, that's where the GMS is. And as another way to do that, you can also say if you go to either the plugins tab or you go to like your favorites, then you can drag a plugin. Okay, it's not trying to use that one as an instrument track. So you have to drag an instrument plugin. So let's use Kepler. And it creates a track with the Kepler on it. So you go here, you can see that it's there. To do this with effects, the way that you actually do it is to open whatever plugin is there. So let's say if I wanted to put multi band delay on the Kepler, then I drag multi band delay and literally drop it onto Kepler. And that's how you make it open that way. So that is the second useful feature. Saves a lot of time when it comes to routing. So then you're not in the channel rack trying to click everything and control L, you know? And it also will name the track. So let's say if I go back and I just delete this, name it FR for for real then it's going to update over here. You know? So that is a really useful feature. And you can see that the name of the track is down there. So it says FR now. Moving on, the final one is rather simple. And that is when you are on the mixer bus, that if you hold down the shift key, and I'm using a Windows computer, I'm not certain about Apple. But if you hold down shift and you click here, then it locks the track to either being on or off. So normally, if I just left click it, then it'll turn off. With these, you left click them, they turn off. If you right click them, it solos that track. But you see when I right click this track and solo it, this one stays on anyway. If I left click it again, then it turns off. The reason this is useful is if one thing is masking another, you can solo whatever instrument you're trying to test and then play the other instruments that you think might be masking it. And then you can make the changes needed just between those two instruments without having to like solo one of them and then turn the other one on again. So what this might look like is let's say even with my voice. If I like say unselect this so it's not locked anymore and then click one of these, you can see that it also will turn off my voice. But if I wanted to examine a certain instrument without having to think about making a mistake that would make me silent, then I hold shift, lock this track, solo the instrument, and I could have the instrument be ready to play, but it won't actually make my voice silent. So it is really useful and I use it a lot. The other way you could use it is like with a, a bus. So let's say you have a bunch of things connected to the same reverb track, like you're doing a send track. But when you click on this track, for example, it turns this reverb off but you want it to stay on so that when you click this, you know, it's like not attached to that reverb. So let's say if you're trying to test this, but you want to compare it to all of these. So now the reverb track is going to turn off because this one is not connected to it when you solo it. So for example, you can see that there's like a drum reverb. So if I were to solo those, it turns this reverb track back on. So if I know I'm just testing for these, then I could turn this one on and it turns this one on, but it turns this one off. So I turn this one back on and lock it. Now I solo this, that reverb track stays on so that the reverb is actually applied if I turn these on and test them against it. And that sounds kind of complicated, but it really is very simple in practice. If you just play around with it, it'll make sense to you.
But with that being said, you know, I hope this video is helpful. And if you made it this far into the video, then I thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments, please. Because they're always welcome. You know, sometimes it's hard to think of what to do. But until next time, have an awesome day as usual. And peace.